It's a wonderful thing to have in the village. Hogsmeade is very fortunate to have its own cauldron shop. In today's lesson, we will cover a truly thrilling event. The Goblin Rebellion of 1752 and all its triumphant tragedy. But more specifically, uh, we will address the devastating effects it had on the wizard milling industry. Actually... We do know the number. 632. But history occurs outside the classroom. And look, it's time for my constitutional. One can practically osmose the history flowing through Hogwarts. I think the professor wants us to follow him. And now for a stroll to the bell tower. Revelio. All in the bell towers that loom above it contain myriad interesting artifacts. If you fail history of magic, you're doomed to repeat it. The, the class, that is. Good to see you again. Recovered from that nasty bout of dragon pox, have we? I... Uh, that wasn't me, Professor. I'm new here. Are you? Well, Ender, welcome. No doubt you're eagerly anticipating my analysis of various wizarding councils, codes, statutes, and, of course, goblin rebellions. Not all goblins are rebellious. Some venture into wizarding politics, such as Irgit the Ugly, some are talented artisans, such as Bragbor the Boastful. Did you say Bragbor? I... I think I know that name. Hmm. Well known for his metalwork. I would imagine much of his goblin wrought iron and silver has survived to this very day. Oh, of course. Oddgok said he was an ancestor of Ranrock. Where were we? Oh, oh yes. <clears throat> Back to our class topic for today. Grimbold Weft. Another notable historical figure. Uh, 
he's right nearby. Curious students can find him on display here in the bell tower entrance hall. And can all students introduce themselves to this hero of Hogwarts? Rebellion. Remember Webb, responsible for some of the most important work done in the Goblin Rebellion of 17. What I wouldn't give to be back on a broom right now. Oh, yes. I see you found Grimbold Weft. Yes, I rather enjoyed seeking him out. The thrill of the scholarly pursuit. I know the feeling quite well. Now, let's turn our attention to the agreeability and general good nature of Sir Ashbuttle. He's also nearby. See what you can learn from him for your next assignment. Standing in eternal but symbolic Rebellion. watch over the bell tower is a retinue of loyal knights, or rather, statue of knights, I should clarify. Keen eyed students will spot the statue of the cheerful countenance nestled among them. At least we're out of the classroom. Yards and sculleries. Where his warm and abrasive class to wander the halls is in keeping with Professor Binns's manner of teaching. I encourage Professor Binns, I found the statue of Sir Athpuddle. Ah, well done. Alas, Sir Afpuddle's affability was his undoing. Died instantly trying to befriend a basilisk. Eye contact is not always to be encouraged. So beloved was he that even some goblins mourned his passing. Of course, that did not bode well with the rest of the goblins, most of whom could not abide. Mourning the loss of a wizard. Pity goblins and wizards can't get along. True. But imagine how dull my lectures would be without goblin rebellions to discuss. Mm. History does tend to repeat. It is a series of patterns, a thought both comforting and disconcerting. Why, students such as yourself will learn from it. History is written by those who do their schoolwork, so they say. Or at least, I like to say that. <laughs>